Um, so the funds are also set to clean up air and water, uh, reduce waste over the next five years in England. The thinking is shifting to a broader landscape scale where habitats need to be bigger and connected. And I think that connected part is kind of interesting because you could create bigger areas, but then to connect them so wildlife can move in between and then therefore people could actually take longer treks. Uh, I think it's an interesting concept. Um, and to, again, not so much focus on, well, does this neighborhood have a park? But to look at, you know, take a couple step backs and look at the whole city, the whole region, and start planning parks on that grand scale. I think that that's, it's cool. Um, your, to your point, I, I, I just don't know how doable it is. So the yeah, British I mean, private- You don't know what, what you have to dismantle in order to make it happen. Hopefully it's not something that, it, it could be like the High Line. You know, that, that was the idea, again, behind the High Line in the city. I don't know if people are aware, but New York City had old above ground railroad tracks that were no longer in use and were basically in disrepair. And uh, some sort of organization raised enough money to come in and say, you know, we can plant- tons of trees and uh and make this and make it basically walkways above the city uh that you could you could enter at the old uh train at the old train station destinations and they, that's what created the highland so it, it could be something similar super to cool that. yeah it's super cool and and that is one of the examples i think that they actually gave um so the british prime minister said protecting the environment was fundamental to the health economy and prosperity of the country great campaign slogan um, the idea is not to halt, but reverse the decline of nature, which is steep. Between 1970 and 2018, key animals and plants have declined by 82% in England, which sounds super scary. So um, green space in the UK is defined as any land with vegetation, like a playing field or an abandoned railway line. Um, estimations say that 20% of the people live further than 15 minutes away from their nearest public park. Not maybe surprising. The black community in England are four times four times less likely than white to have access to outdoor space at home, whether it be a private or shared garden, patio or balcony. So it's a pretty generous definition. Mm. Um, so it, so for it to be four times less likely is is wild. Yeah, it's, similar. Uh, yeah. I mean, similar statistics in the U.S. So not, not um, nothing, nothing different there. Yeah, uh, there seems to be a renewed interest in leaving England in a better state for future generations as the country sees a decline in biodiversity. Now, the blueprint to meet its legally binding targets in water quality, biodiversity, and waste, as well as international targets include, and so this is where it gets like super, super ambitious, creating and restoring at least 2,000 square miles of new wildlife habitats, ensuring everyone in England lives within a 15-minute walk of woodlands, wetlands, parks, and rivers. Restoring 400 miles of England's rivers. New targets for 2028 for reducing plastic, glass, metal, paper, and food waste. And a promise to put environmental protection at the heart of all new government policy, which sounds kind of fluff, but we'll see. So the concerns, which is what you kind of got out right away, um, that have been raised around how people get this 15-minute walk access and how those routes and the green space itself would be created and protected in perpetuity is front and center farms infrastructure etc will all be impacted and will likely need to be compensated and i think that's the rub so i'm really interested on how this plays out because you seemingly have legally binding targets which i don't know what that means because i don't know what the penalties would be if you don't do it oh, right or a new administration yeah all right like what or, that was <laughs> I mean, the last administration that stinks yeah, yeah. um yeah but I then mean, it gets, it's fodder for your opposition party to probably come at you for missing the deadlines. But I mean, yeah, it's probably the, the extent of the damage that could be done in public perception. But I mean, other but you that, have these people who you have you these farms. Have the project you, police out there coming after. But them. you have all this stuff already. There's stuff out there. The, the, the land belongs to someone, whether it's the route to get there or the land itself that you're trying to green up. Yeah. yeah. What do you do with that? Would you just well, pay I mean, people of it, off? Yeah. But well, yes, actually, for, for some of it. Yeah. That we, 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 We've done that in the cities. Um, the pay, uh, again, you hopefully is it fair. Do you think the payments are fair? Well, I think that. I mean, it's. A, it's I'm assuming it's some of these one. farms are like gener multi generational farms that have been in their family for years. Yeah, Does that some matter? people don't get some people don't get compensated at all. I mean, uh, I don't know if many Americans know this, but the government. I mean, there's something called eminent domain. If the government yeah. basically deems your 
plot of land is uh, that is is of basically it's so valuable to the government project they could just simply take it <laughs> without it could be for you. commerce like they could put like a home depot up right yeah I yeah mean, it could be for anything that's absolutely yeah. right yeah that's absolutely right so wow. um so hopefully it's not like that i i'm sure the opposition i'm sure this, there's definitely going to be issues i mean that's an incredibly ambitious plan i do i do not understand how that's going to work at a city like london for instance uh so they they definitely have to be generous with the way in which they are talking about implementation because i mean you're you're not you're not going to get a wetland in in chelsea like I mean, how, how are you going to create a wetland in an urban in an urban area so it's got i mean i'm saying it's got to be something that's of a smaller scale uh maybe like yeah local parks or something like that but that's a you know, bold they, statement 15 minute walk for everyone I know that's what that's what i'm saying that's it's it, it it's definitely going to come with taking down some existing infrastructure um i will say this though you know the english have a long history of coveting green space i mean for instance back in england's uh, basically cold days where you know the pollution was was you know astronomical the the victorian era still had all these different gated you know they used to they have like these uh gated gardens within the within the city limits for the wealthy basically off of your brownstone or whatever they would call those their houses yeah, that houses. sounds nice yeah it, it's the, the poor can't get in so but it was you everyone who was wealthy was given a key to these uh, they essentially centralized gardens that were in the middle of whatever uh, a cul-de-sac of of wealthy people's homes. Gardening is huge in England as well. They like a whole it's 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 a whole hobby system essentially. Gardening is big. Like when I talk about gardening, is nothing like what we talk about in America. Gardening is huge in England. Uh, it's and then and also in Scotland, hiking is like a big pastime. I think they call it it's something about like hiking the. Um, it's it's essentially hiking. There's like another word for it. If you're hiking in the high in the um, what do you call it? The Highlands, Highlands, right? Scottish Highlands, Highlander. Sure, just like that. Just like that. There could only be one hiker at a time. <laughs> if there's two hikers down, if they're coming down the one path. One has to get decapitated. That that those are the those are the Scottish rules. It's it's, it's just the rules. There could only must be, be the brakes. Uh, yeah, but but seriously, walking sticks. I mean, you, you if you go to Scotland, you'll see. Old people, young people, always hiking those. And you'll always see someone moving in those mountains. Uh, so, uh, it, I'm so they're saying, outdoorsy. They are outdoorsy. Outdo- yeah, that's what I'm saying. As a culture uh, in general, outdoorsy. Uh, it's historically, historical culture. We'll, we'll say that. That's interesting. So, so, so it's not you think there, you, you think so? Do you, but do you think it's a pipe dream? No, I don't. I think that I think that uh, wealthier people or people who are. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. I I think the poor people probably will get screwed as per usual, and well-to-do middle class or what have you will probably get these 15 minute walking areas by some means. But that, that, <laughs> that's where faster. I'm always skeptical. I'm, I'm skeptical of of what is happening in the poor. Next, areas there will be a study: areas. poor people walk 50 percent slower than rich people, and that's why they're not meeting that. <laughs> that's why they don't walk. get to the 15 minute. <laughs> that's exactly right. 